Hi everybody, welcome to a new segment we like to call, What is that? What is that? What is that? Ew, bleh, ugh! Whoa, what is that? So here's what we're doing for this segment of What is that? In front of us you see a clear jar. Uh, each of us will take a turn sitting in this chair blindfolded, and the other person has four items that they have picked out that they're gonna put in here. So you stick your hand in the jar and you will guess... What is that? Yeah. Put on your blindfold so you can't see my items. I got some good ones. Don't worry, I wasn't too mean. Here is item number one that Colin has to guess what it is. You're never gonna guess. I know you can't put anything alive in here. I don't know. You never know. <laughs> what? <laughs> Ew, what is that? <laughs> it feels so weird. I honestly have no clue what this is. Yes, tricked my number one. <laughs> right from the start. Oh my gosh, I have no clue. I don't know what this is. Oh, it's a cat toy. What? This is Clea's toy? Yeah. Got him. Go for one. Here is item number two. <sighs> Ew. Is it wet? <laughs> <laughs> this is broccoli. <laughs> it is broccoli. You got it. Wow. <laughs> Item number three. Oh, what? <laughs> Ew! This is like a ball of Cleo hair? Nope. <laughs> is this a ball of your hair? Yes. Ew! You guessed it. Where though. did you get that? My hairbrush. <laughs> Here is the last item. <laughs> you have to actually stick your hand in it. It's a bowl. Yeah, but there's something in the bowl. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> is it ketchup? It's not ketchup. Is it mustard? Nope. Is it barbecue sauce? Nope. Can I smell it? Nope. Is it food? No. Is it paint? No. Is it glue? Nope. Is it an art and craft thing? Nope. It's not food. It's not art and craft. Is it makeup? Nope. Hair gel? Mousse? No. no. Hair... Is it shampoo? Soap? No. Body wash? Nope. It's sticky like gel. Mm-hmm. Okay, do you want me to give you some, you may smell it. I don't know if that'll help me at this point. It smells like hair gel. It smells like hair gel. <laughs> it's not hair gel. Body gel? <laughs> when you have sunburn. Oh, it's aloe? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes! Ew. <laughs> All right. Will be next. Oh. I got two out of four. Well, two and a half. I had some help with this one, but. Okay, next up is the Lady Moyer. Are you ready? Yeah, were you nice to me? What? Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is crazy. I kind of feel like these are gonna be easy. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait! Just kidding. Ew. Ew. Oh, this is a rubber duck. No, it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> Alright, so... Are they gonna get harder? Easy. I don't know. Alright. We'll see. I think the scariest part is putting your hand in. Okay. <laughs> My. Ew.
These are, these are gummy bears. Yep. Mmm, my favorite kind. I thought they would be squishier, but they're like too hard. They're a little old, so I'm not gonna eat them. Oh, okay, so I stink at this. <laughs> two for two. I think I went too easy on you. Okay. Ew. Ew. <laughs> Ew, what is that? Oh, it's a Tide Pod. <laughs> <laughs> he was slimy though. <coughs> hey, no to all of you, do not eat these. Yeah. Okay, last one. I think maybe you should pick a different one because I can smell this. Seriously, you already know what it is? Is it pickles? I was afraid of that. <laughs> okay. We ready for the real last one? <clears throat> okay, don't use your nose. I Cheater. could not help it the last time. I can smell pickles from a mile away. Ooh, ooh. Ew! Oh my gosh, wait. Hold up. That Just is... What? Leftover pasta from the other night. I went out and got worms, actually. Ooh, that does feel like a worm, though. That noodle. Is that, am I right? Yep, you're right. Winner! All right, well, Emily pretty much dominated this one, folks. She got all four, well, technically she got all five correct, and I got, like, two and a half. All right, thanks for joining us for this segment of... What is that? Theme song. What is that? What is that? Ew, bleh. Ugh. Whoa. What is that? Hey, people. It's round three of the great... Quarantine games! Yes, the great quarantine games are back with another exciting installment. And boy, do we got some great games for you today, right? Right. If you're keeping up with our great quarantine games from your own home, you'll know that Colin is up. That's me, Colin. I'm up six to four. Recap. So today we have four more games for us to duke it out and see who wins. Who's going to come out on top? Well, I mean, until the next this round. round. Who knows how long this will last? Ready? Yes. This round's first game is can curling. So we each got three cans. And you'll see our target here below. We're going to alternate rolls. If we land it in the inner circle, it's three points. If we <laughs> land it in the outer square circle, it's one point. Three points, one point. We'll add up our scores. Best of three rounds will win this round. And we're going to start from back there. I got the Diet Pepsi cans. I had the pretty colorful cans. Not sponsored by Pepsi or AHA. Sparkling water. Round one. <laughs> oh, Cleo, watch out. Here it comes, Oka. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. Ah, blocked. 
Go, 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 go! Yes! One point for Colin. Round one to Colin! One nothing. Ooh, stay in there. Stay. There you go. Oh my gosh. I'm cracking under the pressure. Uh -oh. Keep rolling. Nope. Not enough. Or hit your own out. That'd yeah, be great that's too. That's going right in there. Oh, oh no! You gotta get the three. I gotta, I gotta hit both of them. Come on, hit them both. Hit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay, our next game is the chip flip. This game was created by my cousin Julie as a minute to win a game. What you have to do is put a chocolate chip on the spoon, end of the spoon, and flip it up and touch, and catch it in your mouth, not yeah. your hands. And we have one minute to get as many as we can, and the person who gets the most in their mouth in one minute will win the round. On your mark, get set, go. Go. Oh, can't even pick it up. One. Alright, next round is Cornhole Toss! Whee! We each have four throws. Emily is orange, I'm black. And uh, we'll take three different spots. As many times as you get it in the hole, uh, that earns a point. So from the first spot, it's one point if you get it in the hole. Second spot will be two points. And third spot will be three points. Okay, second spot, two points per hole. Emily's up two to one. All right, third and final position. Three points per sinkage. Emily's still up two to one. Let's see what happens. Get in. Oh. <laughs> Two 
Today's final competition is a jumping competition. So we'll each get a chance to jump over some things that will be increasingly taller as we go. And whoever can jump over the most things will win the round. Here we go. Hey friends, happy day to you all. It's good to be with you here again on YouTube. I know a lot of you students are getting very, very, very close to the end of your school year. Uh, so I just wanted to say congratulations. You've almost made it through the weirdest school year of your life, probably. So way to go, good job. If you've been watching with us for the last few weeks, you'll know that we've been having a discussion on mental health uh, as part of Mental Health Awareness Month here in the month of May. So between our family devos that we post on our website on Sundays and our Wednesday videos and our weekly check-ins and live videos, um, you'll know that we've discussed things like routines, uh, we've discussed the importance of human connection and relationships as it relates to mental health, uh, we, we talked about how we can respond to others who have mental health issues and how to deal with anger and and we've talked about a lot more too. So tonight we're kind of wrapping up this month-long theme we've been discussing uh, by talking about a really important piece of mental health which is self-care. A quick disclaimer for you, self-care is not something that I personally am very good at. Uh, I am working to improve in that area but it's always something uh, that I have tiptoed around a little bit. So I've struggled with certain sayings about self-care that don't seem to line up with Christ's values and, and so I was not always a huge advocate for self-care and we'll get into that a little bit more about why and where my hesitation was with that. But I have grown in understanding and uh, I've learned about what true self-care is meant to be uh, and how it should be approached in healthy ways and in Christian ways. So tonight we're going to discuss a biblical approach to self-care. Uh, we'll share some practical and hopefully helpful self-care tips for you, and we'll talk about why it is important in relation to mental health. Uh, so first, in talking about a biblical approach to self-care, we kind of have to establish what self-care is not. So this is where our self-care approach needs to be a little bit cautious because the way the Bible defines self-care can be pretty drastically different than the way the world defines self-care. So in my opinion, as Christians, self-care always needs to be viewed through the lens of Philippians chapter 2 verses 3 and 4, which says this, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of other people. So, when approaching self-care, it can never happen at the expense of someone else who you could be caring for instead. Christian love is based on service, right? And proper service does not happen if you are putting yourself first rather than considering the needs of others before your own. Does that make sense? I hope so. And I trust that you're nodding your head, yes it does, Colin. But what's scary is that our culture is one that is geared towards personal happiness and success, right? We are bombarded with the phrase, do what makes you happy, instead of the phrase that is helpful for us as Christians, do what glorifies God instead. 
One time I was scrolling through Facebook and I came across a post that said, the problem with putting others first is that you've taught them that you come last. Uh, which, depending on the situation, it could potentially have a little sliver of truth to it, but it should not be our concern as Christian people. Christ told us straightforward that the first shall be last, right? And the last shall be first. When the disciples argued about who among them would be honored most in heaven, Jesus responded by saying, whoever is least among you will be considered the greatest. So teaching somebody else that you come last, which goes to explain that this quote, whether or not it's true, it should not be our concern as Christian people, whether or not we come last or somebody else comes first. Get what I'm saying? So that's where my confusion and my misunderstanding of self-care kind of began uh, and why I was so hesitant to explore it further. Because though I still believe this is all true, it should not mean that we can't take time to care for ourselves and our physical, mental, and emotional and spiritual state. So just as we practice physical hygiene, right? We brush our teeth every day, we, maybe we work out, we go on a run, we take care of our bodies, we eat healthy. Uh, just as we should do that, we should also practice mental hygiene as well. So that way we can remain emotionally and mentally healthy. But that should not mean that we toss aside somebody else's need in favor of our own need. Got it? I'm asking you a lot if you get it, and I hope you do because I'm trying to make sense of it. I'm Like I said earlier, I, this is not my expertise, so I'm continuing to try to make sense of it myself. So I hope it makes sense to you. So maybe my problem in all this was that I viewed self-care as like a selfish me time and pampering and extravagant activities instead of seeing it as something that was necessary for my mental health. So we've talked all this month about the importance of taking mental and emotional health seriously. So let's talk about self-care as something crucial to improving ourselves. So a fact of life is that we can only go so far and do so much before we experience burnout. Just as a car needs to be consistently filled up with gasoline, we need to fill ourselves as well so that we can keep moving. <laughs> uh, we've talked about this from a practical standpoint for the last few weeks by discussing the relationships between mental health and physical health and happiness and relationships, etc. Uh, but from a spiritual standpoint, we have the perfect example of self-care in, you guessed it, Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 14 verse 13 tells us that after experiencing grief, Jesus withdrew by himself to a solitary place. He removed himself from the crowds. Uh, he removed himself from his disciples so that he could be alone with his father. This is not the only place in the Gospels where we see Jesus taking a break from his ministry and going somewhere else on his own in order to pray and to fill up. He valued recovery and rest and self-care. And speaking of rest, Genesis chapter 2 verses 2 and 3 reminds us of the importance of rest. After creating everything, God rested from his work. We see the significance of rest planted into the Old Testament law and practices uh, through honoring the Sabbath, uh, keeping things like the Sabbath years and the years of Jubilee, right? Those are all out of a response to that rest that was a part of creation. Uh, Mike Foster and Joanna McHale, who both work as Christian mental health counselors, remind us that we cannot care for others properly if we are not caring for ourselves, too. Uh, you've likely heard the phrase, you cannot pour from an empty cup. And these counselors say, in addition to that, not only will you experience burnout, but you are in danger of doing harm to those that you are supposed to be helping if you try to pour from an empty cup. So think about that image for a second. If somebody came to you with their empty cup and they are thirsty and they're requesting water from you and you take your own empty cup and tip it to pour water into their cup only for nothing to come out, not only is that not helpful for the other person, but how do you think the other person is going to respond to that? Are they going to be thankful? Uh, will they trust you to give them water in the future? It's almost hurtful and mocking to somebody else to, to pour nothing into their empty cup. Do you know what I mean? So we honestly could go on and on and on tonight about, you know, the approach to self-care and stuff like that. But I do want to get into a few practical things that you can do as well. Um, so just a reminder, 
we always provide a short reflection and follow-up devotional on our website to these video lessons if you want to continue this conversation further. So be sure to check that out. Uh, link is in the description below. So how do you take care of yourself? What are ways that you can improve your own mental state that are healthy? We'll talk about some. And again, there are so many. There are so many. And not everything is going to work for every single person. So it's got to be a find out what works for you. These are just some places you can begin. So we're going to talk about a couple of them. Uh, number one, partake in the presence of God. And that needs to be where it begins. We first must understand that biblical self-care means that you are surrendering to God's care. So when we remind you of those Sunday school answers, right? Remember that those are actions we do to engage in surrender to God and his care for us. They're not actions we do because we are supposed to do them, right? So how do you receive God's care? You sit in his creation, you worship with other people, you read his word, you read the Bible, you pray and communicate with him, you trust and you hope in him. You are obedient to his commands. Nothing can restore you and fill you up like God's presence and his holiness. So those Sunday school answers, which seem like just the things we want to hear, uh, those are actually the ways that God has provided for you to refill your tank, to be connected to him, and to be spiritually healthy. So do those things. Number two, another thing you can do for self-care is to do something that you enjoy doing. Yeah, mental health and mental renewal can happen when you have fun and you do something that you equate with joy. Chat with friends, play a game, take a walk, listen to music, something that you just have a good time doing that you can relax and just chill out and refresh and reboot. Number three, uh, journaling. So I've talked with you students before about how much I believe in journaling as a, as a self-care practice. It is a fantastic way to get your own thoughts out of your head and somewhere else. Uh, you can talk with God. You can express what you're feeling through journaling. I just value it so much. You don't have to write a story. You don't have to make it, uh, you don't have to write it in your school formats that you need to do for your papers and essays. You just write whatever pops in your head, literally. And it gives you an opportunity in the future also to see how you've grown, uh, to see what hasn't changed, to see what prayers have been answered, to see what truths God has revealed to you. So it's, it's good for the present and for the future. Another thing you can do is schedule specific times in your day for self-care. Plan out times and ways that you can take care of yourselves rather than just waiting to see if some time pops up in your schedule somewhere at the end of your day. The family devotional we posted on our website for May 17th talks about the importance and significance of routines in relation to our mental health. And if you haven't checked that out yet, I encourage you to do that because it also has some uh, truths as to why people are struggling so much with this current time and, you know, with routines just being completely turned upside down. Uh, it's got some interesting information in there. So check that out too. Uh, number five, again, this is a, an obvious one probably, but just talk, talk it out. Whether it's with a sibling, a parent, a close friend, a youth leader, a counselor, a mentor, a pastor, or anybody you trust in your life, share what you're feeling. Tell somebody if you're struggling or if you're feeling burnt out. It is okay to feel, but it is not helpful to bottle up feelings. Talking through things is a great strategy for self-care. And number six, and probably the most simple one of them all, breathe. Take a couple deep breaths. You'll be amazed at what just taking like five deep breaths can do to reboot and recenter yourself. So these several tips along with all we've talked about this month are only the start of this conversation on mental health. There are many positive ways that you can be practicing self-care, so try some different things until you can find out what best fills your tank. So our goal for this month was to help us understand that mental health is something that we need to take seriously, uh, something that we should be learning about and having conversations about, and working on how to approach it and respond to it in a way that honors Jesus Christ. So a majority of us probably won't personally have mental health issues, but we all know many people that have been or will be affected by them in your lifetime. So all of these tips can come in handy uh, for every single one of us. 
remember your calling as a disciple of Christ to love other people, to care for them, to help them in any way that you are able. Remember to invite people into relationships so that they can experience healing through human connection. And remember to take care of yourself too, so that you can continue to speak life and love into other people. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you for this opportunity to have a conversation on self-care. Um, I just pray that we are able to take care of ourselves uh, so that we can help other people, so that we can uh, not experience burnout, so that we can just uh, experience the fullness of life that you have to offer to us. Um, I pray that you give us the wisdom to approach self-care in a way that's not selfish, in a way that's not taking from other people or uh, ignoring other people, but in a way that um, that takes care of ourselves so that we can care and love other people properly. Um, so God, thank you for giving us the command to rest. Thank you for allowing us um, to rest. Uh, please give us more ways that we can rest and experience um, your filling of us and your rejuvenation of us. So God, thank you so much for this month, this conversation that we've been having on mental health. Uh, help us understand that this is only the beginning of the conversation and um, it's something that we should continue to take seriously and continue to offer our help and our love to other people as they deal with these issues. Um, so God, thank you so much for all you do for us, uh, for the ways you take care of us, and help us to continue to trust you that you will love and always take care of our needs. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, folks, so thank you very much for joining us for our virtual youth group episode 11. We're grateful that you joined and hope that you continue to join us uh, for the future whatever that may hold. And speaking of the future and whatever that may hold, um, it looks like this summer we'll be able to be together. <laughs> I am so excited that we'll have at least a few opportunities to gather together. Um, I miss you so much. I love you guys and I can't wait to see you. I say that every single week, but it's finally looking like we'll be able to do it in some sort of capacity. So for those of you who are involved in our ministry regularly and uh, you receive emails from me, keep on the lookout for a potential summer schedule. Um, we have to keep in mind that things are going to continue to shift as we go forward and not everything on that schedule will be set in stone, uh, but you can be on the lookout for that schedule coming to you by June 1st, I'm hoping. So keep an eye out for that and for ways that we're going to continue to offer online connection for those of you who are not close to us or not necessarily a uh, student in 6th through 12th grade. Um, so we'll continue to offer online connection. And speaking of self-care, um, I've said this in our live sessions, but I haven't said this on camera yet to you guys. Uh, next week, June 3rd, we will not be putting out a virtual youth group video. Uh, like we said, moving forward with the summer as things kind of open up a little bit and as we can continue to get together in person, uh, that does mean that we're going to offer less for these videos. Uh, they are a lot of work and they take me a couple days to put together. So um, as we continue to get into more stuff, I won't have the time to put a video together every week. So whereas that's sad for a lot of you that tune in to... Um, these videos and have been tuning in and I'm so grateful that you have tuned in um, but it's really just such a blessing that we're going to be able to kind of open up again so I do want to assure you that we will continue to offer online virtual youth groups uh, for a while it just might not be every week well it definitely won't be every week uh, over the summer it'll probably be like every other week and then moving forward as we continue to open up and get back to normal um it might be like once or twice a month. So I'll keep you posted there, but you can be encouraged and ensured that we'll continue to offer virtual youth groups in some capacity for a long time. So I won't see you next week, at least on YouTube here, but we will still offer our live sessions and small groups. So thanks for tuning in tonight. Um, if you want to find out more about our ministry, you can go to 
illuminateyouth.org. And if you want to find more about our church, you can go to firstonsecond.org. Enjoy the end of your school year. Cleo says thank you for tolerating her. Um, Enjoy the end of your school year. Good luck finishing up. Have a wonderful, wonderful summer. And we will see you soon. Bye!